Hello everyone. We are now uh, dealing with a, a very interesting auction. It's called the dollar auction game. Some call it the attrition game. What is the dollar auction game? An auctioneer invites bids for a dollar auction. Bidding proceeds in steps of, let's say here, a quarter. It can go by a dime or by a nickel. The highest bidder gets the dollar and pays his bid. But also, the second highest bidder pays her bid to the auctioneer and gets nothing. So let's say that we, uh, I put 25, you put 50, I put 75, you decide to go uh, out at that point. You lose 50, get nothing. I, I win the dollar and uh, pay 75 cents. So again, both the two highest bidder pay their bid, but only the highest bidder obtains the dollar. The other one loses, doesn't get anything, and has to pay her bid. This is not so a uh, strange uh, auction. Um, there is even more aggressive auction. Uh, it's called all pay auction. Namely, everyone pays their own bid, except that the highest bidder gets the dollar, or if you like, gets a prize, well-defined price. This is, for instance, the case where several, comp uh, several companies, let's say, uh, try to innovate, let's say a new drug, and the one that has the patent gets everything. So everyone put money, invest money, um, and typically the one that invests more is more likely to uh, uh, to win, to get a patent. However, everyone else uh, is going to lose. Only the one with the highest bid, or if you like, higher investment, is winning, winning the patent, and all the other pay and get nothing. Okay, so this is all pay auction. Here it is uh, less aggressive than all pay auction. Here, only the two pay. Two, the two highest bidders pay. The highest bidder gets the dollar and pay the bid. The second highest bidder don't get anything and still pays the bid. Okay. So now, suppose the current highest bid, let's say that there are two bidders and the current highest bid is 50 cents. Okay, and you are and you are second with 55. So maybe you start the game and say I bid 25. The other one raised the uh, your bid by uh, by a quarter. You can only raise the bid by either a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, whatever you want, but multiply for quarter. So okay, um, and then you are second with the 25. Should you outbid to 75? You will lose 25 cents if you do not raise to 75. Why? You lose, your, you are going to be second, you just have to pay your bid, you get nothing. However, if you, uh, if you raise to 75 cents and by that the other one stays out, then you make at least 25 cents. If you do raise your bid to 75 cents, the other bidder, knowing that he is about to lose his 50 cents, may raise his bid to one dollar. At least if he, if he wins with one dollar, he gets zero, otherwise he's losing 50, etc. But you know, if the other one is uh, now bidding one dollar and uh, you bid the uh, 75 cents uh, and you stay out, you lose your 75 cents, uh, maybe uh, you should go up to dollar 25. In that case, if you win, you lose only 25 cents because you get the dollar. If you're out, you lose the 75 cents. And as you can see, there is attrition uh, uh, game and uh, it is a dangerous game. The logic is the same. If you beat 350 and your opponent beat 375, you may want to go to $4. Why? Because in that case, if you win, okay, if you win, um, if you stay out, you lose your three dollars fifty. If you uh, bid four dollars and win, uh, you lose only three dollars. So at some point, somebody will fed up and will say, "I'm out." Okay? Uh, how would you play this game? By the way, in order to um, not to make the game uh, an infinite game, 
we can we are I'm going to assume that you cannot bid more than you have in your pocket and what you have in, in your pocket is a uh, very well defined uh, uh, money amount of money <coughs> so this is an attrition game so we said it um, yeah so this is an attrition game once you start sliding it is hard to recover it is better not to take the first step unless you figured out how to play the game down the slippery road Imagine Alice and Bob, two competitors in a dollar auction, each has two dollars in the, in the wallet. Okay, each has two dollars. To avoid technical problems related to indifferences, I mean, I'm indifferent between doing th this or that, just to avoid it, let's just assume that if you bid, it call for a bid, you have to pay one cent for a bid. So you pay if you win, uh, or if you are the second highest, you pay your bid plus one cent cost you every bid that you put. Now, I want to claim that one equilibrium outcome is where Alice starts with a bid of 75 cents and Bob is out. Okay, but uh, in order, that's an equilibrium outcome. But in order to support it, I have to say what are the strategies of Alice the strategy of Alice and what is the strategy of Bob. Now to remind you, a strategy is what to do in every possible circumstance. You cannot let, the best is to think of it as if you send an agent to play for you. And since this is a risky game, you cannot leave the agent confused because he then start maybe competing with the other one and um, and uh, really uh, um, um, it's going to pay i mean to uh, waste all your money so you have to be very careful you want to tell the, your agent you what to do no matter what so it's nothing left for his imagination and same for the agent of alice she is going to send her agent and she has to instruct her agent so that her agent is never confused, cannot call her. And knowing exactly what to do in every possible situation that can be derived in this game. Okay. So I claim that one equilibrium outcome is where Ali starts with a bit of 75 cents and Bob is out. I'm not claiming that this is a sensible outcome, but I claim this is an equilibrium outcome. This outcome does not describe the strategy of either Alice or Bob. So let me first decide what is the strategy of Alice. A strategy of Alice is a decision whether or not to raise her bid and by how much following any possible decision of Bob, following her starting bid of 75 cents and so forth. Namely, the strategy is first start with a bid of 75 cents. To support the above outcome, as an equilibrium outcome, the strategy of Alice could be to start with 75 cents and to exit no matter if and how Bob reacts. So she put 75 and she's out. Namely, if Bob outbid her, she stays out, she's exit. If Bob doesn't enter, she doesn't, not, she doesn't need to do anything and she get the dollar for 75 cents. So remember her strategy, starting with 75 cents and then out. If, uh, if Bob out, outbid her, I don't know if it makes sense to outbid her and to pay one dollar, but I, we don't know, Bob may be crazy. So Alice instruct her agent, tomorrow you are going to play for me. Put as the first bid, you start and put 75 cents. If, any, if Bob is going to outbid you, you are out. Hopefully he doesn't get in and you win a, a dollar for 75 cents. So her strategy is very well expelled and well, very well def defined. Suppose Bob's strategy is to stay out no matter what Alice does. It's also, he sends in, uh, 
he sends his agent and tell him to play dumb, namely, what I, no matter what, uh, uh, what uh, Alice uh, does and what her bid is, you stay out, you don't get in. Okay? Is this an equilibrium? The answer is no. I mean, this is well-defined strategy for the, for the agent of Bob to do nothing. Is this an equilibrium? The answer is no. Why it's not an equilibrium? Because given equilibrium is that I have to be best replied to you and you have to be best replied to me. Namely, if Bob decides to stay out no matter, why should Alice put 75 cents? She could win the auction with uh, 25 cents. He's not going to get out, to get in. In which case, if she puts the 24 cents, uh, 25 cents, she wins, the, uh, she wins and how much she get? She gets a dollar. So dollar minus the 25 cents is 75, minus the one cent that it costs to put the bid. She makes 74 cents. If she starts with 75 cents, she makes only 24 cents. One dollar minus the 75 cents, 25 minus the cost, the, the one cent cost. So it is 24 cents. So she prefers to make 74 and not 24. So she has incentive to deviate and therefore it's not an equilibrium under this circumstance. Given the strategy of Bob, I should not start with 75 cents. I, as Alice, should start with 25 cents. Okay, so, but I want, I want to have an equilibrium where Alice start with 75 cents. Okay, so in that case, we have to fix the strategy of Bob. Uh, if this is the strategy of Bob, then Alice is better off offering only 25 cents. It, I repeat what I said. In this case, she will make 74 cents better than the 24 cents that she makes if she starts with a bid of 75 cents. In which case, she's better off deviating. It's not an equilibrium. Let us uh, try to fix it. Suppose that Bob's strategy is to outbid Alice and raise her bid by 25 cents if she says her first bid is 25 or 50 cents and stay out otherwise. So I call my agent and say, look, come to play for me. If Alice is going to put 25 or 50 cents, outbid her. If she puts 25, put 50. If she puts 50, put 75. Otherwise, if she puts something else, um, um, if she start with 75, don't uh, stay out, don't come in. Again, if she starts with 25, I'll be there with 50. If she starts with 50, I'll be there with 75. If she starts with 75, don't come in. Is this a strategy? No. Why? Because she starts with 25, let's say. I uh, out be there, Bob, out be there with 50. Then she may out beat him with 75. Then what he does? He instructs his agent only what to do um, after her initial bid. If she starts with 75, don't go in. But if she starts with 25, you go to 50, that's your strategy, Bob, then she outbid you with 75. What do you do? Your agent is not instructed what to do here. And therefore, your agent may play and uh, go above uh, Alice, etc., etc., may uh, waste all your money. Okay? So you have to specify the strategy in such a way that there are no confusion. Otherwise, it's not a strategy. A strategy is what to do in every possible circumstance that the game can arrive. Is this a well-defined strategy? The answer is again, no. I mean, I repeat. Why? If Ali starts with 25 cents and both Bob raise her to 50 cents, what will he do if Alice outbid him with a 75 cents. His strategy has to specify his decision in this case as well. 
Now I fix it and here is a well-defined strategy of Bob. Raise Alice bid by 25 cents if she starts with 25 or 50. If she then outbids him, he exits. And if she starts with 75 or more, he's out. So first of all, I know what to do in the first initial stage. If she puts 25, I put 50. If she puts 50, I put 75. Okay? And if she puts 75, I'm out. Okay? So I put, let's say she starts 25, I put 50. Now she puts 75. Outbid me. If then she outbids him, he exits. So no confusion for the agent of Bob who is going to play tomorrow the game for Bob. Now the two strategies are well defined and they constitute a Nash equilibrium where she actually starts with a bid of 75. Let's prove it. First of all, if she given her strategy to start with 75, Bob has no reason to outbid her to one dollar because he's going to make one dollar if he wins. It's not clear that she's not going to outbid him, but let's say he wins with one dollar. Yeah, he gets one dollar, pays one dollar, and the bid cost him one cent. He's losing at least one cent. If he stays out, he's getting zero. So the, the, the decision staying out, if she puts 75, is best reply action of Bob, given that Alice starts with 75. But now we want to see that Alice is best off with 75. Why? Suppose that she... We sev how much he makes with 75 to start with? He exits. He uh, stays out. She starts with 75. He stays out. How much he makes? She makes... Uh, she gets a dollar. She pays the 75. 20, she's net. I mean, she gets 25 net, but has to also pay the one cent. She's making 24 cents. But what happens if she reduces her bid uh, to 25 cents? If she reduces the bid to 25 cents, according to his strategy of Bob, he's going to outbid her to 50. And uh, uh, if he's going uh, to be the outbid her to 50, uh, then uh, if, if, she go, if she raises to 75, okay, then uh, she's making uh, 25 cents, but has to pay 2 cents. So, because she put two bids. The beginning 25 and then the 75. She's going in the best. I mean, she's going to get uh, uh, 23 cents. By starting with 75, she makes uh, um, 24 cents. So she doesn't need, she doesn't want to reduce her bid from 75 to 25. What about 50? If she put 50, according to Bob, he he is going to uh, he is going to uh, uh, from 50. He's going to uh, uh, raise it to 75. And then either she loses the 50 if she stays out or if she outbids him, okay, then she has to outbid him to one dollar. Okay, she, she's going to make at, at most, I mean, at least she's going to lose two cents because she's bidding twice and uh, she comes to a dollar, a bid of a dollar. And if she wins, she gets a dollar. She ends up with zero, but has to pay the two cents. So, of course, she's also best off not to uh, reduce her bid from 75 to either 25 or to 50 cents. But it can be shown, so this is an equilibrium, but it can shown, be shown that this is not a perfect equilibrium. Uh, it may be with uh, that the outcome may be perfect, but the, these are not the strategies. The strategies are not... And it really depends on how much money you you start with. We'll see in a second. So the, typically it is not a perfect equilibrium and the equilibrium outcome where Alice beats 75 cents and win and wins may not be a perfect equilibrium. So the perfect equilibrium is the one that you get by going backward. Let us analyze the strategic interaction between Alice and Bob from the last step to the start as we did before, just a lecture ago. 
So here is the dollar auction game again. First note, so now is the solution. First observe, whoever beats two dollar, this is trivial, the total budget, wins the auction. I don't know, we, I may, maybe we started 25, 50, I don't know what. But let's say that at some point I put two dollars. You cannot outbid me. Because you don't have more than two dollars. Remember, I'm assuming that both of them are coming in with two dollars. Okay? So, um, so clearly, if somebody says two dollars, he wins the game, but loses uh, one dollar plus change, you know, the, the number of cents. So, wins the auction, but loses one dollar and, and change. Hence, I want now my claim is if this is correct, then whoever bids dollar twenty-five, okay, wins the auction. How do I derive to dollar twenty-five? I tell you, I take the dollar auction plus okay, uh, plus the SEP, okay. So I mean, first of all, I I reduce. It's two dollars that my I have in my pocket minus the dollar which is the dollar auction plus the jump which is in a quarter of 0.25 but i'll explain it in a second this is uh, 125 so this is uh, the, the the technical step but why i do this so what i do you take the amount of money you reduce the dollar and add the jump but why so let's prove it Hence, whoever I say B dollar twenty five wins the auction. By the way, in that case, loses twenty five cent and a change for the the you know every bid costs a cent. Uh, yeah, because if you win with twenty dollar twenty five, you have to pay dollar twenty five and a change, and you get a dollar. Okay, so why this is true? If you bid dollar twenty five and your opponent outbids you you will lose the dollar 25 in the change if you are not uh, if you are out and you will lose only one dollar if you beat two dollars and you win because whoever beats two dollars wins the game okay so i repeat let's say that i beat dollar 25 okay <coughs> and my opponent outbid me Okay, so I may lose dollar twenty-five, correct? If I don't outbid him. However, if I jump to two dollars, for him, let's say first of all to establish he cannot, out, he doesn't, it doesn't make sense that he will outbid me with two dollars. Why? Because if I put a bid of one dollar twenty-five, his bid was at at most one dollar because I had to outbid him. Maybe it was seventy-five cents. Let's assume one dollar. He, he, he doesn't have any incentive to go from one dollar to two dollars because he's raised his bid by one dollar to get to win a one dollar and to pay one cent for the bid. So if uh, if I put dollar twenty five for sure, my opponent is not going to bid two dollars. So he can outbid me with dollar fifty or dollar seventy five. Okay. So in that case, okay, I will. Uh, so if I don't outbid him, okay, then uh, uh, then I'm going to lose dollar twenty-five. But if I outbid him and uh, and put the bid of two dollars because he put less, then I win for sure. That's how I started. Whoever bids two dollars wins the auction. Clearly, I will win the auction because he cannot outbid me. In which case, I will lose only one dollar. So um, um, he doesn't pay. He doesn't pay him to outbid me, because if I if he outbids me for sure, I, I'm going to outbid him, and he's going to lose at least one cent more than if he would stay out. I repeat. Suppose that I put. I mean, there there is a process. I he bid, I bid, uh, blah blah blah, and eventually I'm now bidding dollar twenty five. If this is the case that I beat to dollar twenty-five, it means that he beat my my opponent bid either dollar or less. So he has no incentive for him to jump from the dollar to two dollar. Doesn't make sense because he invests 
one more dollar and one cent to get one dollar. So for sure he's not going to jump to two dollars. So if you outbid me, he will outbid me with either the dollar fifty or dollar seventy five. Okay, so now what should I do? If I stay, if I exit, I lose my dollar twenty five. But if I outbid him after outbid me with my dollar twenty five, I will jump to two dollars. If I jump to two dollars, then how much I lose? I lose only one dollar and, ch and change. Otherwise, with my dollar twenty five, if I exit, I lose all the dollar twenty five and change. Okay, uh, so that's uh, uh, know that your opponent whose bid is below dollar twenty five has no incentive to jump to two dollars since he's better off by at least one cent to stay out or exit. So what I what I want to say is this. Um, uh, my op if I put dollar twenty five, my opponent has no reason to outbid me because I would going to outbid him with my two dollars and um, uh, two dollar bid and win for sure, and therefore he will lose quite a bit. So he 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 whatever he put, let's say be before um, before I put the dollar twenty five, he put one dollar. He's better off exit. So whoever. Put a bid of dollar twenty five wins the game. Is this clear? To me, it is clear, and all the empty audience around me, no one complained that it's not clear. So I take it as it is clear. But it's it takes time uh, to digest all this. So now we establish two things: whoever bid two dollars win. Whoever bid dollar twenty five wins. So now we do the same technique. Dollar twenty five, but I, I'll have to to explain minus the dollar that I put, plus the jump which is point twenty five. This is twenty five plus twenty five is fifty. So I claim whoever put fifty cents win the game. Knowing that whoever bid dollar twenty five wins the auction, we conclude in the same manner that whoever bids fifty cents, and that's the way I do it. Dollar twenty five minus one plus point twenty five is the fifty cents, wins the auction. Let me repeat the argument. Okay, let's say that you bid. Um, if you bid the uh, fifty cents. Well, your opponent bids either zero twenty-five. How come that you bid twenty fifty cent? Either you started it, or your opponent put twenty-five and you uh, you uh, uh, raise it to fifty. I claim that your opponent should not outbid you. It does not pay your opponent to jump to dollar twenty-five. Okay, because we prove that if he jumps to dollar twenty-five, he wins the game. But if he jumps to dollar twenty-five, he loses twenty-five cents if he wins. Okay, plus change. And now he he uh, he's going to lose only the twenty-five cents plus one cent. Say that if he didn't, uh, if he put, if he he was not in before, he should not get in now and start with dollar twenty-five because he's going to lose twenty-five cents. But suppose he already bid twenty-five cents before I outbid him to fifty cents. So, um, so in that case, if he loses, if he stays, if he decides to exit, he loses twenty-five plus one twenty-six cents. Correct. Now, if by a chance, so he may want to outbid me. So first, I want to say, for if he wants to win for sure, we proved it. He should jump to dollar twenty-five. But if he jumps to twenty dollar twenty-five, even if he wins, he's going to lose. The dollar twenty-five is going to get a dollar, so it's twenty-five minus two bit, twenty-three bits. It, uh, sorry, uh, uh, my, uh, minus two to uh, twenty-seven uh, cents is going to lose more than a uh, twenty-six. So for sure, he doesn't want to jo to jump to dollar twenty-five, but maybe he want to jump to seventy-five or to a dollar. And he outbids you and bids, so it does not pay your opponent to jump to dollar twenty-five. And if he outbids you, uh, he will bid either seventy-five or one dollar, okay? But then remember, you put fifty cents. You put fifty cents. If you stay out, if you decide to, if he outbid you and you exit, 
uh, then you lose uh, uh, the 50 cents plus the cent. So you lose 51 cents. But if you jump to $1.25, uh, you win for sure, and you lose only 25 plus change. So it's better for you to jump to $1.25. So he knows it, okay, that you are going, if you put a bid of, 20, of uh, 50 cents and he's going to outbid you, you're going to $1.25 and you win the game. So, and you lose less than the 50 cents. You lose 25 plus small change. Therefore, he's not going to outbid you. Therefore, you should start with a bid of 50 cents. We conclude that whoever bids 50 cents win the auction. Okay, so it's not the 75 like the Nash equilibrium, which is not perfect. By going backwardly, it is clear that the first bid should start with 50 cents and the other one is not going to outbid you. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, by the way, uh, we can do the same. Uh, suppose that, okay, so exercise. Show that in, if each one of them has two and a half dollars in the wallet, in their wallet, and if this is commonly known, I have to assume that it is commonly known that they have the two dollars before and now two and a half dollars. Then whoever bids 25 cents wins the auction with 75 cents. Why? So I tell you how I do it. I start with two, two and a half, and I say minus the dollar plus the jump. What is it? This is two and a half minus one, one and a half plus a quarter, 1.75. So claim whoever, whoever bids dollar 75 wins i'll prove it to you in a second but with the same way i can say uh, claim one claim two whoever bids one dollar 75 minus the dollar plus the jump what is it 75 plus 25 a dollar wins so whoever put a dollar wins. Claim two. Claim three. Whoever bids one minus one plus 25, namely a quarter, wins. So the first one to say in this auction, uh, if you come with two and a half dollars, the first one to say, I bid my f I bid first I put 25 cents you win the game the other one will not get in so uh, to prove it okay so I want to start with whoever put dollar 75 wins okay suppose that I put dollar 75 that means that you put at most 150 you are not going to jump to 250 okay but uh, first of all just a second to realize whoever bid two and a half dollars, I should maybe claim zero. Whoever bid two and a half dollars wins the game. Why? Because nobody can outbid him. You have the, you have, uh, um, you exhaust the entire budget. Okay, so the other one cannot put 275 because the other one, at the, the assumption is that both of them, they have the same amount in their pocket, two and a half. Okay. So first, claim zero, whoever bids two and a half wins the game. Claim one, whoever bids $1.75 wins the game. Why? Let's say that I bid $1.75. It means that you bid before me at most $1.50. You're not going to jump to $2.50 to win the game because then you add a dollar and a cent to, uh, to win a dollar. So for sure, you're not going to outbid me uh, with two and a half. So whatever you are, want to outbid me, uh, so you're not, uh, you can outbid me with two or with two and a quarter dollars. But then, listen carefully. If I'm out and I'm afraid that you are, you are going to outbid me and I will be out, I'm going to lose one dollar $1. seventy-five and change. If I go to two and a half dollars, I win the game and lose only 75 cents and a change. 
So it pays me to go. If you outbid me, I'm going to jump to two and a half dollars and I win the game. So therefore, you don't want to do it. So we establish whoever put a dollar seventy-five wins the game. Next step, knowing that I, knowing that it's by backward induction, I ask whoever I said whoever wins a uh, bid one dollar wins the game. Why? Suppose that I bid one dollar. Okay, so you bid uh, below. You are not going to jump to dollar seventy-five to win the game because we claim we proved already that whoever bids dollar seventy-five wins the game. Why? Because you bid at most 75. Otherwise, I would not outbid you with one dollar. With 75 cents, if you outbid me, uh, if you jump to dollar to dollar 75, you are going to uh, you are going to uh, invest one more dollar, and you are going and and uh, dollar and a cent, and you are going to win if you win only one dollar. You don't want to do it. So I know that if you outbid me with uh, um, with um, uh, dollar, then um, uh, that means that uh, um, you you will outbid me with either dollar and a quarter or dollar and a half. Now, in that case, if I'm stay, I don't want to stay out. I'm I'm best off jumping to uh, to dollar seventy five to win the game. I know that whoever bids dollar seventy five wins the game. Why? Because otherwise I'm losing a dollar. And if I jump to dollar seventy-five, I lose only twenty-five cents. Uh, seventy-five cents and a change. Because I'm I win with dollar seventy-five and uh, I, I win a dollar and I have to pay dollar seventy-five and change. So I lose seventy-five cents plus a little bit. Otherwise I'm going to lose the dollar. So uh, you know that if you outbid me, I'm going to outbid you and win the game. You don't want to do it. So you stay out. Good. So now I know. So we prove that whoever put dollar wins the game. So now let me 1 minus 1 plus 25 cents. I claim that whoever put 25 cents wins the game. Why? Because suppose I put 25 cents. I, it must be that I'm the first one. If you are going to outbid me, let's say you put, uh, you're not going to jump to one dollar because then you had, the best case for you is to lose only one cent. So if, if you want to outbid me with 25 cents, you have to put either 50 or 75. In that case, if I don't outbid you, I'm going to lose 25. But if I jump to one dollar, we proved the one that uh, bid the dollar wins the game. I will win the game, the auction. And in that case, I will lose only one cent and not 25 cents. So therefore, you know it and you are not going to outbid me. So, whoever bids 20, I mean, a quarter wins the auction. Good. Uh, you can do the same thing. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, suppose that Alice and Bob have each two and a half dollars in the, in the pocket and it's commonly known. Suppose that the bidding steps are not in quarter but dimes. So uh, show that whoever bids 0.7 wins the auction. So this is uh, quite simple in a sense. I do the same thing. I start with how many they have, how much they have two and a half. So first of all, whoever bid two and a half wins the game. Okay. Now I throw, I look on two and a half minus the dollar plus the jump 0 0.5 0 0.1. So you can easily prove that this is 1.6. Whoever bids 1.6 wins the game. Okay, so I know 1.6 wins the game. The same manner, you repeat it. Um, so next, whoever put 1.6 one mi one minus 1 plus a dime, which is what? 0 0.6, 0 0.7 wins the game. And therefore 0 0.7 wins the game. Okay, the more uh, subtle is Suppose that Alice has two and a half and Bob has dollar seventy-five. By the way, whoever has more money will win the game here. And this is commonly known. Show that the perfect equilibrium outcome is where Alice bids twenty-five cents and wins the auction. So I don't I mean the, you have a solution here, make sure that you understand the solution, but uh, 
that is what I want to talk about in the dollar auction game. It's interesting one, uh, or some call it the game of attrition, attrition game. Now I want to, uh, to show you another example called the Sintipid game. <clears throat> this is a very, very interesting example, attracted hundreds of papers. Okay, on the table, here is the, the, the game. On the table, there is a pot with ten and a half dollars. Alice and, and Bob play the following game. Alice starts, and she can either stop the game and say, okay, stop, in which case they allocate the money in the pot where Alice gets the ten dollars and he gets, and Bob gets only half uh, half a dollar okay so every time uh, she's going to get 20 times more than him okay first of all she gets 10 if she stops the game she gets 10 and he gets only the half but if Alice can be nice to Bob and let him decide because she is nice there is a miracle and the ten and a half dollars are multiplied by ten and you get the pot has hundred and five dollars. In this case there is a miracle if she's nice and the money in the pot increases ten times more to all hundred and five. Now Bob has to take I mean to take a decision. If he decides to stop the game he takes the hundred leaving five dollars to Alice every time the one that stops get tw 20 times more than the other one but Bob can be nice to Alice and turn the decision to her in which case another miracle and that 105 moves growing to 1050 in this case in this case the pot increases by the, the same miracle, 2050, where, okay, uh, well, this is the decision of Alice. So if she is nice, then the pot is a uh, thousand and fifty, and now Bob has to uh, who make if Bob decide to stop the game, he takes hundred, okay, and uh, uh, living, but he is nice. Uh, to Alice, I mean uh, the, the, the pot is 1050 and now Alice has to take a decision, if she stops she takes a thousand leaving 50 to Bob and in the same way I can continue until million or billion or trillion, whatever you like but let's stop in a million so it goes like this at the beginning if Alice stops, she gets 10 he gets f uh, 50 cents if she is nice, the pot multiplied by 10, instead of 10 and a half, you get 105. If Bob stop it, he gets the 100, she gets the 5. But he can be nice and to her, and the pot is now 1050. If, he stop, if Ali stops, she gets the 1000, leaving 50 to Bob. But she can be nice to Bob, in, in this case it's not 1050, but 10,500. In that case, if Bob stops, he gets the 10,000, leaving $500 to uh, Alice. You see, 20 times more. But if Bob is nice to Alice, then uh, instead of 10,500, it's going to be 105,000. In which case, if Alice stops the game, she gets 100,000 and Bob 5,000. 5, but she can be nice to Bob. In which case it's not 105,000 by million and 50,000. If Bob stops the game, he gets the million and she gets the 50. We can continue, but let's stop here. Okay? If you're more fascinated by getting to billion, please continue. A centipede game, you know, centipede is the one that has a lot of legs, like what we have here. And now let's work it out by backward induction. What happens? So it's very easy to um, analyze. I start from the last. Bob has no choice here. He must stop the game. He cannot be nice. The game is over. So for sure he goes like this. Alice knows it. And Alice knows that if she continue, if she's nice, she's going to end up with 50,000. If she stops the game here, 
she's going to get more, 100,000. So clearly she doesn't want to be nice to get 50. And if she stops the game, she gets 100. So she stops. Bob knows it. And he says, ah, if I'm going to be nice to Alice, she's going to stop the game, I'm going to get 5,000. But if I stop the game here, I'm going to get 10,000. So he stopped the games here. But Alice knows that he's going to stop the game here. And therefore he, she knows that if she's nice, she's going to get 500. Let me stop the game to get 1,000. Better. Bob understand that, uh, that she's going to stop the game here and he's going to be to take 50. He prefers the 100. So he stopped the game here. Alice knows and say, if I'm nice, Bob stop, I'm getting five. Let me take the 10. And this is the equilibrium outcome. They can go to a million, billion, trillion, but they stop at 10 and a half. Now, this is the perfect equilibrium, but I can tell you, if you analyze the game and make it strategic game in a table, it's uh, more complicated. You can prove that this is also the unique equilibrium. There is nothing more than the perfect equilibrium. So it's not that maybe the perfect, uh, there is another equilibrium makes more sense. It's never the case. But, um, but no, there's unique equilibrium. You can prove unique equilibrium, which is perfect. And in this equilibrium, Nobody is nice to nobody and uh, Alice terminates the game just at the, the, the start and uh, she takes $10 leaving Bob 50 cents. This is qu quite disappointing. But I want to say this, uh, I mean, with this game we can also learn something interesting. Okay, first let's see what, what I have to say here. So you see, Bob stopped the game because there's no choice. Alice stopped the game because she compared 100,000 to 50 and she prefers 100. Bob knows all this. He also understands how to do these arrows. So he says, if I stop the game here, I'm getting 1,000. Otherwise, I'm getting 5,000. So he stops. So Alice knows that he's going to stop the game. And she said, here I get 1,000. Here only 500. She stops. Bob knows it, that these are the arrows, and therefore he knows that if he stop the game, he gets 100, and if he continues, he gets 50, so he's going to stop. And Alice knows this, and, uh, and therefore she says, should I get $10 or $5? She goes for the $10, and this is the only, uh, the only sensible outcome. It's very disappointing. They can go to millions and they uh, somehow, or billions if you want to continue the game, but they stuck with the ten and a half dollar, the initial state of the pot. Solving the game backwardly, the only perfect equilibrium outcome is ten dollars for Alice and fifty cents for Bob. Moreover, it can be shown that this is the only equilibrium outcome, not only perfect, there is nothing else. The only equilibrium outcome must be that that's how much they get. Okay. Um, moreover, uh, for example, another equilibrium is I, I can support other equilibrium, but I don't want to uh, uh, to get into it. Uh, you know what? Since I mentioned it, I'll say it. Suppose that they they go with the arrows that everyone is nice to the other until Bob comes here. However, Bob stopped the game here. So, should Alice be nice to Bob? No, because uh, she knows that Bob will stop it and she will get five instead of ten. Does Bob want to move, I mean, to change his, um, his decision? No, because she stopped the game. Doesn't matter what he does. He's, she's going to stop the game. Is Alice here wants to uh, to change her decision? It doesn't matter. She ended at the beginning. She ended up, so it doesn't matter what she planned to do in the third stage. If in the first stage she terminates the game, so this is an equilibrium, not like this. This is the perfect. Equilibrium. However, the outcome is the same outcome. Ten for Alice, fifty cents for Bob. Okay, let me say something that is not in the slides, but I want to, um, I mean, to tell you that actually the amount of, I mean, what, what's going on here? 
So let me uh, let's write down what's why I mean why they act the way they act. The last one, Bob has no choice; he has to terminate. Why Alice? Why Alice terminate the game before? Because she's rational. Now, what is what is the rationality of a player? How we define rational? A player is rational if he prefers more or less given what he knows. Namely, if I prefer or I choose something that gives me more benefit, more utility or more money than the other one. So given all my information, if I do A, I'm getting uh, 7. If I do B, I'm getting 10. I'll do B. That's rational. Rationality means I prefer more or less. Trivial, uh, the very weak definition. So here, uh, Alice is rational. Why Alice is rational? Because she prefers 100 on 50. So I can say here, the reason that she's terminated the game, Alice is rational. I put R for rational. Now why Bob that a decision here? Why Bob terminates the game here? Because he knows that Ali, first of all he's rational. He knows that the game is going to terminate if he uh, being nice to Alice and uh, he prefers 100,000 or 5,000 so he's rational. But moreover he, how does he know that Alice will terminate here? Because he knows that Alice is, Alice is rational. Let me write it down. Bob knows, K for knows, knows, Alice is rational. That's what happens here. He knows that she will terminate the game. And he's rational, in addition. And I don't write it. I write what I want to emphasize. Okay, so, but why Alice will terminate the game here? Because she knows that Bob will terminate. How does she know that Bob will terminate? Because she knows that Bob knows that she's rational. So here is Alice knows, Bob knows, Alice is rational. Look, this is, I would say, that uh, she is uh, really uh, very proud of herself, I have to say. She is rational, fine. But she, I mean, she knows that Bob knows that she is rational. Who, I mean, everyone knows that I am uh, I'm rational. So why? I'm, I'm so sure about my rationality. Not only that, my reputation. Everyone knows that I'm rational. Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice is rational. Fine. But why Bob stop the game here? Because he knows all this. So he knows that Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice knows that uh, that Alice is rational, and therefore she will stop the game uh, after. So here is Bob knows that Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice is rational, and eventually here it says Alice. Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice is rational. Look, when you do it, I mean, here I, we did it five, uh, five times. If you do it ten times, you don't understand what you are talking. But look here, why she stopped the game in the beginning, I tell you what requires. Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice is rational. Very difficult to understand the statement. But without the super rationality that is required here, common knowledge of rationality. Okay, I, the Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice Bob did not know blah, 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 rational. Uh, that's the assumption to work out the game backwardly. And therefore, if you have many, many, many steps in the game and you have to work, uh, to work the game backwardly, Sometimes you have to be a little bit careful because if you, if, if you don't think that they are so rational, it will not work out. By the way, Bob Auman, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics for Game Theory together with um, um, uh, um, Schelling, Thomas Schelling, thank you, see you, uh, with Thomas Schelling, um, 
he uh, had a beautiful paper that shows that if there is some small of irrationality, let's say, I, t- I tell you for instance, suppose that Alice is rational and suppose Bob is rational. Suppose no, the, uh, Bob knows that Alice is rational and Alice knows that Bob is rational. And suppose uh, that, Ali, that Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice is rational with probability 0.999. Okay, so the irrationality appears, uh, you know, in a, in a uh, higher hierarchy, hierarchy, hierarchy. Okay, I know that you know that I know that I know that is rational. So, uh, but there is only a small irrationality about Alice knows that Bob knows that Alice is rational, but she, uh, she knows it with probability 0.999. Then... Uh, Aumann says, depending on the amount of irrationality, the small irrationality, the equilibrium will be that the game will start rolling and they will be nice to each other at a point one of them jump out. That makes more sense. Okay, so the purpose of, uh, of, uh, of this example is to tell you, first of all, that backward induction, as much as the equilibrium is perfect and the idea is very nice to work it backwardly, it requires uh, a, a, a significant amount of rationality or super rationality by the players involved. Okay, the next topic is simultaneous versus sequential interactions. So there are cases where players that engaged in a simultaneous game, namely they take their actions simultaneously, are better off playing it sequentially. By the way, um, even if we are not taking the actions simultaneously, but let's say when I take the action, I don't know what action you took yesterday, it is... uh, completely equivalent to think of uh, simult- we make the decision simultaneously. What does it mean simultaneously? When I take an action, I don't know if you took what action you took. And you don't know what te- action I took. So uh, saying that we take it simultaneously is the same thing as to say even if one moves first and the other one moves second sequentially. But if, if the second one to move does not know what the first one that moved did, what choice he took, then uh, it is completely equivalent to playing simultaneously. When we are, we are talking about sequentially, I mean like in chess, player one moves first, player two sees the move and then react to the move, that sequentially. Okay, let's take an example. Consider the following two person simultaneous game in strategic form. So player one has two strategies going up or down. Player one is the row player, player two is the column player. She can take one of the two strategies, left or right, and the payoffs are uh, given in the table. As you can see, by the way, up for player one is strictly dominant because four is more than three and 6 is more than 5. So no doubt that player 1 will go up. By the way, player 2 does not have a dominant strategy. Why? 2 is more than 1, but 3 is less than 4. However, to solve the game, what they are doing, it's clear. Player 2 knows that player 1 will go for sure up because it's strictly dominant strategy for player 1 to do. So she says, knowing that he's going up, should I go left to get two or should I go right to get one? And clearly she's going to get to go left and the only sensible outcome is four for player one and two for player two. Let's see what's written here. So this is strictly dominant, dominated strategy, so I can eliminate it. Then, obviously, if we eliminate down, two is not going to play R to get one, she's going to play left to get two. So this is the, the strategy up of one strictly dominates the strategy of D, the strategy D, 
Player two who knows that one uh, plays up, choose a cell, and, uh, and the only sensible outcome is 4-2, four, 4 for player 1, 2 for player 2. Great. Now let's say that player 1 will, um, or player 2 will move first. So suppose that, let me, uh, hold on. So we have 4-2-6-1, just to... 4, 2, 6, 6, 1. And then let's go here. 3, 3, 5, 4. And th so this is 1. Up, down, left, right. 1 and 2. So this was a simultaneous game. Now let's say that 1 uh, decide to go... Both of them, let's say, agree that one will go first. So one can choose either to go up or to go down. And two can react. Two sees if one goes up or one went down. And she can react with left, right, left, right. So let's say that if one goes up and two goes left, up and left, is four, two, four for one and two for two. Then let's say that one goes up and she goes R. Up and R is 6-1. So I'm written, it's written 6-1. Now let's say that one goes down. Down. And she goes left, down and left. 3-3, three, 3-3. Three, three, three. Down and R gives 5-4. Because down R is 5-4. So now the game, if player 1 moves first, this is the game okay it becomes a game a game in a tree form first one then two but now the backward induction or the perfect equilibrium is this who makes a decision here two so she compares two to one and she will go for two here two compares three to four and if he goes down she will go to four so one knows how two will react after his move and he then decides if he goes up he gets four and if he goes down he gets five so he's going here and the outcome is five four instead of before it was four two so what happens here both of them are happier to let one moves first because before Remember, 4 is more than 3 and 6 is more than 5, so this is a strictly dominant strategy. Once he goes here, she compares 2 to 1, go here, this is the outcome, 4, 2. But now that we let 1 go first, all of a sudden, both of them, uh, both of them uh, benefit. 1 gets 5 instead of 4, and 2 gets 4 instead of 2. So, um, they, I mean... Both of them should uh, benefit from, uh, from letting one go first. So um, let's look what I wrote in, in the PowerPoint. Okay. So player two here goes left. And here she compares four to three and she will go R. One takes into account and say if I go up I get four. If I go down I get five. So he gets five. And this is the outcome better than before solving the game backwardly player one chooses down player two chooses r and the perfect equilibrium outcome now is five four that is both players are better off compared with the outcome four two of the simultaneous game so they have a incentive to agree that one will go first and then two both of them be benefit it's not always like this, just an, an example. Good, so uh, sometimes, now what happens if two goes first? Then nothing will change if probably four, two will be the result. Let me see if I did it. Yeah, suppose next the two, the two players agree that two moves first. So let me just remind you here. Up, four two six one. 
3354. Up, down, left, right, one and two. So let's say two stars going left. If one goes up, for where four two, that's exactly what's written here. If two goes left and one goes down, she goes left, down, three, three. Left and down, three, three. R and up, R and up, six, one. R and down, five, four. So this is the new game. But now we look, one he makes a decision here. So he compares four to three and go down here to the, to the left or up. One here compares six to five and go for six. Two then knows that the, uh, one will play according to the arrows here. If she goes left, she gets two. If she goes right, she gets one. So she will get here and the same for two. So the simultaneous case and the sequential where two uh, move first and then one gives the same result, four for player one and two for player two. However, if one goes first, then the outcome will be five and four, best for both of them. So let me just follow this. Up, up, and two goes left, four and two, and this is the outcome as before. Here the perfect equilibrium outcome coincides with that of the simultaneous game. Consider the following game in strategic form. Player one can, they can go up, down, left, right, the same thing. Uh, again, five is more than three, six is more than four, clearly <coughs> player one will go up. She compares two to one and she goes left. So this is the outcome. The only sensible outcome is 5-2. By the way, 2 does not have a dominant strategy. 2 is more than 1. 3 is less than 4. However, 1 has to go up. It's his strictly dominant strategy and 2 knows it because 2 knows the game. And therefore she knows 1 goes up and therefore she has to decide if she goes left to get 2 or R to get 1. Okay. Verify that this outcome is also the perfect equilibrium outcome of the sequential game with one moves first or two moves first. Let's see. Let's see. Suppose one moves first. One, and he can go up, down. Oops, sorry. Up and down. And she can go left or right. Left or right. Up and L, up and L, five and two. Up and right, six and one. Down and left, down and left, three, three. Down and R, four, four. Player two makes a decision last, so we start from here. She compares two to one and goes for two. Here, she compares three to four, goes for four. Player one, says, if I go up, I'm getting five. If I go down, I'm getting four. He goes here, and the outcome is exactly the same as the simultaneous outcome. Now let's assume the two moves first. Two can go left, right, and one can go up, down, up, down. Left and up, 5, 2. Left and down, 3, 3. Right and up, right and up, 6, 1. Right and down, 4, 4. 1 makes a decision here. He compares 5 to 3, goes for 5. 1 makes a decision here. He compares 4 to 6, goes for 6. 2 takes into, uh, in this into account. If she goes left, she gets 2. If she goes R, she gets 1. She goes here. And in all three cases, you get the same uh, outcome. So the perfect equilibrium of a sequential game or the simultaneous case, they all give you the same outcome. So it, it depends on the game. If it pays them to go sequentially or simultaneously or um, 
that depends on the specific numbers what we call the payoff of the game. Consider the following game in strategic form. Player 1 has 2 strategies, player 2 has 3 strategies. Let's see. First of all, down is strictly dominant strategy for player 1. Because 6 is more than 5, 12 is more than 7, 4 is more than 1. Great. So player 1 for sure will go down. She knows it and she says, if I go left, I get 5. If I go middle, I get 2. If I go R, I'm getting 4. She goes here and this is the, uh, the only sensible outcome of the simultaneous game. Okay, you can see it from here. The only sensible and obviously equilibrium outcome is 6 and 5. Suppose next that 1 moves first. The following is the tree of this game. So one moves first, he has two moves to go up or down, and she, player two, can answer in three different ways. Left, middle, R. So look, player one goes up, and she can go left, middle, R. Player one goes down, and she can answer left, middle, R. So let's see the payoffs. If he goes up and she goes left, up and left, 5-2. If he goes up and she goes middle, up and middle, 7-4. Up and right, up and right, 1-3. If player 1 goes down and she goes left, 6 and 5. If player 1 go, uh, goes down and she goes middle, 12 and 2. If player 1 goes uh, down and she goes out, 4-4. Four, four. So, I mean, all these numbers... Uh, here is a game in a tree form with all the payoffs. Everything is well defined. Now let's see what would be the outcome. Remember that uh, the only equilibrium is the only sensible outcome. And by the way, for that matter, it's the also the only equilibrium of the game. Okay, let me show you if I want to go back for the equilibrium. Uh, this is the here. So in order to find all equilibrium, I designate the 4 up, I designate this one because 4 is more than 2 and 3. If I go down 5, 2, 4, I designate the 5. Okay? If she goes left, I designate the 6. 5 and 6, designate the 6. If she goes M, I designate the 12. 7, 12, 12 is more. 4 and 1, 4 is more. You look on it, you have only one equilibrium with two starts, 6 and 5. Okay. So now let's say, uh, let's do it. Player two here, she compares two to four to three. Clearly she goes for M to get four. Here she compares five, two, and four. She goes for five. One knows it. So now one knows that if he goes up, he will get seven. If she goes down, if he, sorry, if he goes up, he will end up with seven. If he goes down, he will end up with six. So he goes up, and the, the outcome now is 7 and 4. So it is better for player 1, but it is worse for player 2. Here, player 1 has the first mover advantage. Okay? It's not always. Sometimes it is, sometimes it, it, it is not. So uh, let's do it now in a nicer way okay so we get he goes up and 7-4 is the outcome of the game okay so what does it mean when you compare it to the 6-5 the sensible equilibrium here 7 is more than 6 but 4 is less than 5 so uh, even though 1 would like to, to move first to move first Two will, return, will uh, refuse, because two, if they go simultaneously, she get five. If they go sequentially, she's going to getting only four. What happens if two starts? The perfect cream outcome is seven four. Player one improves his payoff from six to seven, but the payoff player two decreases from five to four. So uh, 
By the way, if she goes first, let's see what happens. So she can go left, middle, R, and he can go up, down in each one of them. This is player two, and this is player one. Left and up, left and up, five two. Left and down, six five. Middle and up, seven four. Middle and down, twelve and two. R and up, R and up, one three. R and down, four four. So what player one is doing here? He compares five to six, goes for six. Here player one compares seven to twelve, goes for twelve. Here player one compare a one to four goes for four. Player two says, if I go left, how much I'll get? Five. If I go middle, I'll get two. If I go right, I get four. And the outcome is the same outcome as a simultaneous game. 